Lesson 7.6, Fraction Multiplication. When we add or subtract fractions, we first need to give them common denominators. We don't need to do this when multiplying fractions. To multiply fractions, we multiply the numerators together, then we multiply the denominators together. Then we write the product in simplest form. We have 2 thirds times 3 fourths. We multiply 2 times 3, which is equal to 6. Then we multiply the denominators, 3 times 4, which is equal to 12. And we find a common factor for the numerator and denominator, the greatest one we can find, and that would be 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1, and 12 divided by 6 is 2. It's equal to 1 half. We know a fraction is in simplest form when 1 is the only common factor for the numerator and denominator. We can also use a model to multiply fractions, as we learned in video 7.4. That's linked in the description if you missed it. We have 1 fourth times 1 half, and it's equal to 1 eighth. We're looking for 1 fourth of 1 half. We shade in half the model. We shaded it yellow. Then we split that 1 half into 4 parts as fourths. We split the entire model into fourths going this way. We use a second color to show 1 fourth of the yellow part 1 half. And the part of the model that was shaded twice is the product. It's 1 eighth of the entire model. Here we have 2 thirds times 4 fifths. We can write it as 2 times 4 over 3 times 5. We multiply 2 times 4, which is 8. 3 times 5, which is 15. We get 8 fifteenths. And we know the fraction is in its simplest form because 1 is the only common factor for 8 and 15, the numerator and the denominator. Here we have 4 sevenths times 3 eighths. We can write it as 4 times 3 over 7 times 8. That's equal to 12 56 We need to write it in simplest form. We can list their common factors. For 12 and 56, their greatest common factor is a 4. We divide 12 by 4 and 56 by 4, and we get 3 fourteenths. We can write a whole number as a fraction with 1 as the denominator. 2 is equal to a 2 over a 1. 3 is equal to a 3 over a 1. 4 is equal to 4 over 1. 99 is equal to 99 over 1. And we can multiply a whole number by a fraction by writing the whole number as a fraction with 1 as its denominator. So we've learned that 2 times 3 sevenths, we can write 2 times 3 as the numerator over that 7, we get 6 sevenths. But we can also write this 2 as a 2 over a 1, so we get 2 times 3 over 1 times 7, and that's also equal to 6 sevenths. We get the same product either way. Here we have 6 times 2 fifths. We can write it as 6 times 2, which is 12, over that 5 denominator. That's equal to 12 fifths, which is equal to a 5 fifths plus a 5 fifths plus a 2 fifths. 5 plus 5 plus 2 is 12, see? And it's over the denominator 5. That's equal to 1 whole. That's 2. That's 2 and 2 fifths. We can also write it as 6 times 2 over 1 times 5. That's equal to 12 fifths, which is also equal to 2 and 2 fifths. Here we have 5 times 3 fourths. We can write it as a 5 times 3, which is 15. Over that 4 denominator, we just slide it across. That's 15 fourths. And 15 fourths is equal to a 4 fourths, a 4 fourths, a 4 fourths, and a third, 3 fourths. See? So we have 1, 2, 3, and 3 fourths. We can also write it as 5 times 3 over 1 times 4, which is equal to 15 fourths, which is also equal to 3 and 3 fourths. We learned that we can use parentheses to indicate multiplication. Our factors will be next to the parentheses with no operation signs between them. We learned about that in video 1.12 when we learned about grouping symbols. So this is 2 times 3, which equals 6. We can also write both factors in parentheses. That's 2 times 3. We can also 
write one factor in parentheses like this and have the other one on the outside, that's 2 times 3. We can also use a floating dot as 2 times 3. And this is important for algebra because that big X, an X, may get confused with a variable X. We use a lot of variables in algebra. We need to evaluate a times 5 6 for a is equal to 2 halves. So it has given us that a is equal to 2 halves. So this a is a variable, and remember, a variable is a letter of the alphabet that takes the place of an unknown amount. But in this case, they gave us what it was equal to. It's equal to 2 halves. So this means some number, a, multiplied by 5 6, and that a is equal to 2 halves. We substitute, we replace the a with that 2 halves for a as 2 halves times 5 6. Now we multiply the numerators, 2 times 5 is 10, then multiply the denominators, 2 times 6 is 12, we get 10 twelfths. We divide them by their greatest common factor, which in this case is a 2, 10 divided by 2 is 5, 12 divided by 2 is 6, we get 5, 6. And because 2 halves, it's got the same numerator and denominator, it's equal to 1, our product is equal to the factor 5, 6. We learned that in the last video, 7.5. The identity property of multiplication states that the product of any number and 1 is that number. This includes fractions and decimals. So this 2 halves, he has the same numerator and denominator, so he's equal to 1. He cannot change the identity of this 5 6. The product will be 5 6. Here we have a 1 fifth in parentheses and a 20 on the outside. That's the same as 1 fifth times 20. We can write it as 1 times 20 over 5 times 1. See the whole number 20 is a 20 over 1? 1 times 20 is 20, 5 times 1 is 5. It's equal to 5 fifths plus 5 fifths plus 5 fifths plus 5 fifths. We have 4 ones, that's 4 whole. We can also do 20 divided by 5, which is equal to 4, to get 4 whole. So we can think of fractions as division problems. Of the flowers in Miss Cho's garden, one-third are perennials. That means they come back every year. Three-fourths of the perennials are tulips. What fraction of her flowers are tulips? So we think we need to find three-fourths of one-third. One-third are perennials. Three-fourths of them are tulips. We need three-fourths of one-third, which means three-fourths times one-third. We can write three-fourths, and the one-third in parentheses, we multiply the numerators, three times one is three. We multiply the denominators, four times three is 12. We divide them by their greatest common factor, which in this case is a three. We get one-fourth are tulips. And remember, we know the fraction is in simplest form when one is the only common factor for the numerator and denominator. Here's my three dogs. This is Lola, this is Betty, and that's Miss Bonnie Pickles. She's the sassiest one. I feed my dogs, Lola, Betty, and Miss Bonnie Pickles, twice a day. Little dogs need to eat twice a day. They each get one-fourth cup canned food and one-sixth cup dry food per meal. How many cups of food do my dogs eat each day? So we think I have three dogs who eat two times each day. And 3 times 2 is 6, so that means I have to make 6 meals each day. And we can find 6 meals times the 1 fourth cup canned food and 6 meals times 1 sixth cup dry food. We can add their products for a total. So we have 3 dogs times 2 meals each day. That means I have to make 6 meals each day. 6 meals times 1 fourth cup can would be six-fourths. That's equal to one and a half cups of canned food each day. 
six times, that's six meals, times one six cup dry food is six sixths. That's equal to one whole cup of dry food each day. We can add the one and a half cups of canned food plus the one cup of dry food, and it's equal to two and a half cups of dog food per day. And they're little, so they don't eat that much. So let's make some sense of word problems because you'll have to write them as equations. We have two thirds of the girls play sports and one fourth of the sports is soccer. That means one fourth of two thirds. It means one fourth times two thirds. Here we have five eighths of the students play Minecraft. Half of the Minecraft players are girls. That means we need to find half of five eighths or one-half times five-eighths. Tala spent three-fourths hour doing homework and one-third of that time was spent on math. We need to find one-third of three-fourths. That's one-third times three-fourths. Now, if you notice something about each of these, they all have the fraction and then the word of. One-fourth of is one-fourth times. Half of is half times. One third of is one third times. See that? Our next lesson, 7.7, .7, we're going to learn about area using mixed numbers. I hope I'll see you there. I'm really proud of you for watching math videos on YouTube, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.